Well, this is a big day and a, and a, and a, a lot of important issues. We have the, uh, the next head of ODATIS, uh, the head of mental health, and the current head and future head of the Department of Developmental Disabilities. Um, the first one I want to I want to announce is the Ornament Hall. I like to call him. You know, I told him I said they named the building after you at Ohio State, so we now call him Orton Hall. Um, <laughs> and um, Orton, which we're all calling him now. Sorry, uh, he runs the combined uh, operation down in Fairfield County. And my friend Bob Blair, who's the head of uh, Administrative Services has been familiar with uh, with Orman for a while. In fact, invited him to be on that local board. Uh, I've known Bob for 35 years. He got a heart of gold, and he said you need to spend some time with Orman. And I got the first chance to spend time with him down in Scioto County, uh, dealing with the problem of prescription drug abuse. Now, let me. Let me just make one thing uh, understood. When it comes to this issue of chronic pain and the issue of what you do about it, we are not going to, we're going to separate the people who absolutely need the help from those who are purveyors of, uh, of drugs to, uh, to, to have people addicted. I mean, we know there are people with chronic pain. Uh, I think we have to get up every day and, and thank the good Lord that we don't have it. Um, but for those that do, uh, it's like a living hell. And we do absolutely want to separate that community from the community that gets caught up in the, the illegal trafficking. Um, Orman has had, I mean, he is a guy that has operated this joint operation in Fairfield County. He is respected statewide as a person who has the best interests of the client uh, at heart. He, um, he's, a, he's an evidence-based guy. I mean, we talk about rehabilitation, you know, we have, frankly, pretty dismal results when it comes to the ability to get people off of these uh, very uh, uh, addictive drugs. Uh, it's easy to just keep doing the same thing. Foreman spends his time trying to figure out what works. Because we have to think about all of this uh, as kind of a family matter. Um, you have somebody in your family that gets addicted to this, uh, it's a living nightmare for everybody. So he's, he's spending his time trying to figure out how we can decrease the recidivism rates for people who do have addictions. And um, he's going to be a leader here in this prescription drug fight. Um, this is serious. We've we've had uh, went down to uh, to Scioto County. Many of you know that. I heard about this all the time. I traveled, particularly in southern Ohio, and um, we we really believe that if we can begin to make some inroads in Scioto County on this issue, it can help us to make inroads across the state. And Scioto County has been profiled as one of the worst. Uh, places in America in terms of the abuse of these uh, of these drugs, and it would, it would be great if we could put the focus on a combined way with the community, the legislature, the governor's office, uh, to be able to really shine the light and make some progress, including the uh, the clergy down in uh, in Scioto County. So uh, he will be, you know, he's got a lot of a lot of things he has to do, but one of the things that he will be committed to doing is trying to um, get us to make some progress in this whole area uh, of this terrible addiction problem. Uh, the Department of Mental Health. Uh, Tracy Plouk is, uh, you know, she's very experienced. I mean, first of all, she was hired by Tim Keene. Uh, she worked for John Martin. She's running Medicaid. How'd that happen? He couldn't figure out who to get to run Medicaid, and uh, after a long enough period of time, they said, we've got somebody here that knows how to do this, and she's currently working as the director of Medicaid. She understands all of these organizations, mental health to uh, developmental, dis developmental disabilities. She's, in some ways, a numbers cruncher, but she's far beyond that because she's enlightened from the standpoint that our challenge is to develop coordinated care inside of our state in an area that um, 
but we've seen very little reform over you know decades, frankly. So she's going to be able to come in and take a business-like approach, but don't misunderstand what I mean by that. Figuring out a way to break down silos, and I'll, I'll talk about this as I get ready to conclude. It's something we have to think about in our state. And then, of course, John Martin. I call him the star of the show. He's currently running uh, the Department <coughs> of Developmental Disabilities. Is there a harder job? I, I don't think. I don't know what it would be. Um, we have a population that's very vulnerable. We have a population where we think all the time about how we can improve their lives. And John, in the midst of all of this, has been a reformer. Save money. So you take saving money, being enlightened, serving the population. Uh, I, I just think he's a, a man of great character, and teamwork is obviously the order of the day. And uh, we'll be announcing uh, Director of the Department of Health, a couple other things that you will be, I think, find great interest in. But this is part of that team in terms of, of health, overall health care. Here, here's the way I look at this. I know that the community, I had a meeting with the community. At, uh, Holly Schottenstein and Brad Kasten had a meeting uh, out in Bexley. I wanted to have everybody calm down in the middle of this election because people were worried that with the budget hole and the need to reduce taxes and you know what's going to happen to our community. And uh, it was actually really a fantastic meeting. I had some people leaving the meeting saying, you know, I never voted for a Republican before, but I also never had a meeting with anybody quite like this. And I had some of my staff there who understand all this much better than I do. Um, <clears throat> This is not an area that's right for some kind of devastating cuts. Uh, and I know this is the only time I'd probably go to a meeting where I would say that, okay? Because um, I think we all need to understand that Ohio, in a kind way of describing it, is in a tailspin. Dallas Morning News last Sunday wrote a Texas perspective in Ohio, and if you read it, it would cause, give you cause for depression. Um, we have to get out of this mess we're in. Because if we're talking about things like drug and alcohol abuse, it's not a far path from unemployment, desperation, poverty, to drug abuse, okay? But in this community, we have to have reform, but it cannot be sort of the piecemeal reform that people think about, or we'll go and cut this program or cut that program. We have to break down silos. Mental health and physical health must be integrated. This is finally getting to the point where we think we can do it. And we find that the mental health and the physical health, called integration, very closely connected. Tracy understands this issue, is being the head of Medicaid. Now she's in mental health. These folks all understand what the challenge is in breaking down silos. The people who work in these areas are people who largely don't get paid a lot of money, but there's an amount of turf, self-protection, maybe even at times bleeding into ego, that gets in the way of taking the resources that we have and delivering them to the population that's in need. I am hoping that we can, over the next few years, and I don't mean few years like, you know, over the rainbow somewhere, get started right away to break down barriers, reduce bureaucracy, limit turf, integrate services, coordinate care, and have Ohio being a very progressive state when it comes to the issues of developmental disability, mental health, health in and of itself. Uh, that's our goal. Um, I have, a, I have a passion for this. I think it is very important we get this right. And Ohio, which we hope is going to move forward into the 21st century in many different areas, wouldn't this be great? Wouldn't this be great if families could say that things got better, that somebody got cured, that somebody in developmental disabilities is, uh, 
is, is we're finding out ways to, to be able to use them, let them use their skills, whatever their God-given given skills are in a more effective way. This would be just fantastic. So the message is no turf. You know, I said to the lobbyists, uh, I read in the paper yesterday, you know, either get on the bus or we'll run over you with the bus. I'll make it a little gentler to the, to the mental health and developmental disability community. <laughs> We have to work together, <clears throat> and we're not going to let the silos and the turf exist because we didn't make an effort to knock it all down and to deliver better services for people in need. So let me start by introducing 